Hello from Ford City, Pennsylvania on Friday, November 27th, 2020. This is Bible study number 256 in Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. Now there were at Antioch that in the church that was there prophets and teachers, Barnabas and Simeon, who was called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. So now in this Gentile church, thriving Gentile church in Antioch, the gathering of believers had uh, recognizable gifts of teachers, prophets, and uh, we have them named here who were the prophets and teachers. So they don't recognize that any of them were apostles at this point, but they were prophets and teachers. Remember the, the three most important giftings to the local church, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 12, 12 and 14, are apostle, prophet, and teacher. Actually, it's chapter 12, apostle, prophet, and teachers so they had the prophets and teachers but they didn't recognize the apostolic ministry yet in uh, Antioch so we had the names of these men here verse 2 while they were ministering to the Lord and fasting the Holy Spirit said set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them so they were seeking the Lord the term ministering to the Lord in fasting and prayer, the Holy Spirit spoke through one or more of these prophets and said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul. So set apart is a, is a term for uh, appointing them, in this case, to be apostles. And so verse 3 says, Then when they had fasted and prayed, notice the emphasis on fasting and prayer, and laid hands on them, there's the ministry of laying on of hands for the purpose of ordaining or setting aside leadership. They sent them away. They sent them away is the term uh, that identifies the apostle or the sent one. We use a term missionary sometimes to describe that but apostle is the new testament term for one who was ordained and sent out by the local churches for the purpose of establishing new churches in different places so they being sent out by the holy spirit notice the emphasis on the, the sending out or the apostolic calling is the gifting and calling of the Holy Spirit. We don't, we don't gift and call people. Our schools can't do that. Our organizations can't do that. We can only lay hands on them and recognize what God has already done in calling and gifting them for their particular ministry. And so the Holy Spirit sent them out. And they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. So this would be their Paul and Barnabas's uh, first missionary journey they were they were recognized in the church of Antioch previously as prophets and teachers but now they are recognized as apostles when they reached Salamis verse 5 they began to proclaim the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews and they also had John as their helper so they they had taken John Mark with them and noticed their their tradition or their practice was that they would go into the established congregations of the Jews, the synagogues, and preach the word. So the, their primary purpose as apostles was to preach the word of God, just like Jesus had sent out those original 12 to preach and minister to the people and to search for the worthy ones or the men of peace who would receive their ministry so they could disciple them and, and then raise up local churches and leaders. Verse 6, when they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they found a magician, a Jewish 
false prophet whose name was Bar Jesus. So we have this uh, Jewish false prophet named Bar Jesus, which would mean the son of Jesus, who was trying to deceive the people. He was a magician. So this is the second magician. We remember talking about Simon in uh, Philip ran into him in Samaria. Now we have this Jewish false prophet, Bar Jesus, who was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, a man of intelligence. So we have a governmental official here, Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man. This man summoned Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. So this political figure uh, sought out Barnabas and Saul. Notice the order uh, here early on in their ministry uh, puts Barnabas ahead of Saul in the order of, of their uh, their team, Barnabas and Saul. He sought them to hear the word of God. But Elimus, the magician, for so his name is translated, was opposing them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the faith. So this this false prophet was trying to keep the proconsul from uh, hearing the gospel and believing the gospel. Verse 9, but Saul, who was also known as Paul, and notice if we see him called Paul from now on, filled with the Holy Spirit, fixed his gaze on him and said, you who are full of all deceit and fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, Will you not cease to make crooked the straight ways of the Lord? So what a statement. When when you're uh, being ministered to by a preacher, is this what you want to hear? Well, if you're a false prophet, this would be the right thing for them to tell you. And Paul was bold by the Holy Spirit power and uh, just laid him right out for the, the, the fraud and the deceitful worker that he was following Satan and who had perverted the, perverted the ways of the Lord. Now behold, verse 11, the hand of the Lord is upon you and you will be blind and not see the sun for a time. And immediately a mist and darkness fell upon him and he went about seeking those who would lead him by the hand. So now remember the history of Paul. When he got saved on that encounter on the Damascus road with Jesus, he was blinded by the, the glory of the Lord and was was not able to see for several days until uh, Ananias came and laid his hands on him and healed him. Now, Paul seems to be operating in, the, in this situation in such a way as to cause a seeing man to be blind as a, as a move of God of, of basically judgment or rebuke on this false prophet's life who was trying to keep the uh, Sergius Paulus from hearing the gospel. Then the proconsul believed when he saw what had happened, being amazed at the teaching of the Lord. So this miraculous sign of striking a man blind, the false teacher, false prophet blind, caused the proconsul to, to believe the gospel. And this is how God has always used the supernatural not to glorify men, but to glorify himself and lead people to faith in Christ. Verse 13, Now Paul and his companion put out the sea from Paphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia, but John left them and returned to Jerusalem. Now we don't have all the details, but we know that John bailed out on that ministry team at this point. And uh, disappointed Paul, by the way, we find out later on, and he went back to Jerusalem. But going on from Perga, they arrived at Pisidian Antioch, and on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. So again, their practice was to go find the local congregation of the Jews and preach the gospel to them. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the synagogue officials sent to them saying, brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say it. And they would give men like like these an opportunity to share uh, a word with, with the congregation of the Jews. And Paul stood up and motioning with his hand, said, Men of Israel, and you who fear God, listen. So we have 
Uh, Luke is telling us how Paul would motion with his hands, and we'll see that in other places too in the book of Acts. The God of this pe people Israel chose our fathers and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt. And with an uplifted arm, he led them out from it. For a period of about 40 years, he put up with them in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he distributed their land as an inheritance, all of which took about 450 years. So again, this is a familiar preaching And after these things, he gave them judges and Samuel the prophet. And they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. After he removed him, he raised up David to be their king, concerning whom he also testified and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my, all my will. And from the descendants of this man, meaning David, According to the promise, God has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. So he, he preaches Jesus as the son of David. And after John had proclaimed before his coming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. So then uh, they, he introduces John the Baptist, preparing the way, calling uh, the Jews to repentance. And while John was completing his course, he kept saying, what do you suppose that I am? I am not he, but behold, one is coming after me, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. Brethren, sons of Abraham's family and those among you who fear God, to us the message of this salvation has been sent. So he's speaking not only to the Jews, but also to the, the God-fearing Gentiles who, who have attached themselves as proselytes to the, the Jewish synagogue. Verse 27, For those who live in Jerusalem and their rulers recognizing neither him nor the utterances of the prophets which are read every Sabbath fulfilled these by condemning him and though they found no ground for putting him to death they asked Pilate that he be executed. And when they had carried out all that was written concerning him they took him down from the cross and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days he appeared to those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, the very ones who are now his witnesses to the people. And we preach to you the good news of the promise made to the fathers that God has fulfilled this promise to our children in that he raised up Jesus, as it is also written in the second Psalm, you are my son, Today I have begotten you, as for the fact that he raised him up from the dead, no longer to return to decay, he has spoken in this way. I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David. Therefore, he also says in another psalm, you will not allow your holy one to undergo decay. For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid among his fathers and underwent decay. But he whom God had raised did not undergo decay. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through him forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you, and through him everyone who believes is freed from all things from which you could not be freed through from the law of Moses. Therefore, take heed so that the things spoken of and the prophets may not come upon you. Behold, you scoffers, and marvel and perish, for I am accomplishing a work in your days, a work which you will never believe, though someone should prescribe it to you. So you see, Paul's method of preaching was to use great volumes of prophetic scriptures from the Old Testament to link Jesus Christ, the Messiah, to all of those fulfilled prophecies and he quoted scripture after scripture that they would be familiar with from the old covenant different 
writings of the prophets, pointing out that Jesus fulfilled all of these and was was persecuted and crucified and rose again from the dead under the direction of those Jewish leaders there in Jerusalem. So this is how he preached Jesus. He gave them the, the Jews the whole history overview of, of how God had promised to send this Messiah and Jesus fulfilled all of these prophecies. Now verse 42, as Paul and Barnabas were going out, the people kept begging that these things might be spoken to them the next Sabbath. Now when the meeting of the synagogue had taken had broken up, many of the Jews and of the God-fearing proselytes, you see that? The God-fearing proselytes, those who weren't Jews but had become uh, Jews uh, from the Gentile people, followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them were urging them to continue in the grace of God. Now after the meeting was over, we see that many, both Jew and Gentile proselytes, uh, believed the gospel and began following Paul and Barnabas as disciples of Jesus. And th those, those apostles encouraged them to continue in the grace of God. That's what we need. That's why Paul always started out his, his, uh, his greetings to the church's grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, what we need today is grace, more grace, that supernatural power that only comes from God that can transform everything in our lives so that we will be pleasing to him and walk as disciples. And so Paul and Barnabas didn't attach these people to them as personalities that they were some someone important, but they directed them to follow Jesus Christ and receive the power from God that would change them and give them strength to serve Jesus. Now, verse 44, the next Sabbath early, or excuse me, the next Sabbath nearly, the whole city assembled to hear the word of the Lord. So that word got out here and the people were very, very open to hearing the gospel. Almost everybody in the city came on that next Sabbath a week later to hear these apostles preach. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and began contradicting the things spoken of by Paul and were blaspheming. So the same pattern, the religious hypocrites trying to save their, their business, their religious hypocrisy and their, their religious dogma that controlled these Jewish people, they became jealous that the people were abandoning the false teachings and believing the gospel of Jesus Christ. So they, they turned the people on Paul and Barnabas. Look what happened. Verse 46. Oh, they were not only uh, contradicting what the, the apostles said, but they were blaspheming, which means they were they were speaking evil of what God was doing through them. And this, this comes very close to the unpardonable sin, which is claiming that someone working in the power of the Holy Spirit is actually directed by evil. And they were blaspheming God through opposing these apostles. Verse 46, Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, it was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first since you repudiate it and judge yourselves unworthy of eternal life, behold, we are turning to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us. I've placed you as a light for the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the end of the earth. Another, another Old Testament prophecy. When the Gentiles heard this, they began rejoicing and glorifying the word of the Lord. And as many as has been appointed to eternal life, believed and the word of the lord was being spread throughout the whole region but the jews incited the devout women of prominence and and the leading men of the city and instigated a persecution against paul and barnabas now you see it's paul and barnabas now mentioned in that order and drove them out of their district 
But they shook off the dust of their feet in protest against them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were continually filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. So look what happened here. The whole city, <coughs> excuse me, assembles to hear the gospel from these apostles. The Jews were jealous because of the great crowds of interested people. And they spoke against what the apostles were teaching and even blasphemed the Lord. And so what did Paul do? Both, both of them spoke out boldly and immediately told them that since they rejected the word of God, they would not receive Jesus Christ and the message of the gospel. They were turning now away from the Jews to reach the Gentiles. And he quoted the old covenant prophecy about reaching Gentiles. And the, the, the Gentiles were rejoicing and began following the Lord and the word of God spread. But what did the Jews do? They raised up opposition. They raised up. This is so, so much a part of human nature to turn against the plan of God and cause division and, uh, and, and anger and, and even riots against those who are preaching the gospel. And what did Paul and Barnabas do? They did what Jesus instructed the disciples to do from the very beginning. He told them, even the first 12, then the 70, and everyone following them, and Paul was following this instruction from Jesus, that when they went into a new place and preached the gospel, they should look for the people who were worthy, the people that received their, their ministry, the people who believed, and they should work with them. But those who reject the preaching of the gospel, we are not supposed to continue wasting our time with them, but we are to first warn them about the coming judgment like it will be worse for them on the day of judgment than for Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what Jesus taught. And they shook the dust off here and warned them that they were going to the Gentiles. They didn't stay and argue with them or, or try to continually persuade the unbelievers. If the unbelievers did not respond, it was a, it was a clear message that God had not called them. You see that in verse 48? As many as have been appointed to eternal life believe. You must have a calling from God. He chooses from the beginning, even though we don't know. He, he chooses the ones he knows will respond. And the very fruit of their response, whether they believe or whether they don't believe, proves who they really are. Jesus said you will know them by their fruit. And so we have this, this, this good fruit of responding in obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ versus the rejection of the gospel. And that fruit is obvious. It was obvious to Paul and Barnabas. It was obvious to those who wanted to follow Jesus. And these Jews who rejected the gospel were not were not uh, uh, they were not compromised with or tolerated, but they were told that they were facing the judgment of God. And Paul and Barnabas and this apostolic team kept looking for those who responded with the fruit of repentance. And that's what we should be doing. We should be looking for the people who receive the gospel. And those are the ones that we should care for and make disciples of and raise up from, from baby Christians to maturity. That's what our, our leaders should be doing. That's what our local churches should be doing. And we see the, the great move of God that began here among the Gentile believers, yet we have the tragedy of many souls rejecting the gospel. So we have this uh, great testimony of the apostles being, or the of the prophets and teachers, Barnabas and Saul being called to become apostles. And they were sent out after prayer and fasting, gifted and called by the Holy Spirit, sent out by the church in Antioch, and they went out and encountered opposition right away. But God supernaturally confirmed their ministries, and they kept on preaching, 
And, and everywhere they, they went, they would first go to the, the synagogue of the Jews to give them the opportunity to hear the gospel. And if they responded, great. They would disciple those new believers. If they rejected the gospel, they would shake off the dust and warn them of the judgment like Jesus taught them to do. And they would keep moving among those who responded to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this powerful message that you have revealed to us in the book of Acts concerning the calling of these prophets and teachers to become apostles sent to the nations and how they obeyed and went out in the power of the Holy Spirit and, and were led by the Spirit and, and how they ministered and even, even causing a man to be made blind who rejected the gospel and was trying to interfere with their ministry and how you used them to preach in the synagogues and how immediately the true and the false believers were identified and how these apostles would continue laboring with them even while they shook the dust off from those who opposed them and, and kept on going to find those who would receive Jesus. Father, help us as church leaders and local churches to behave and obey your instructions to obey the, the direction you've given us, to go and preach in the power of the Holy Spirit and to make disciples of, of those who respond, but not to waste our time with those who reject and oppose the gospel. Thank you, Father. Give us your wisdom and direction. Bless my brothers and sisters who are studying the word with us today. Keep them safe. Keep them from all sickness and give them a, a new outpouring of the Holy Spirit that all together we might glorify you by bearing fruit that remains. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's been good to study the word again with you today, and we'll be going on to Acts 14 tomorrow as we work our way through the, the book of Acts and, and the rest of the New Testament. May the Lord bless and keep you. Be safe out there. Be wise. Uh, protect each other from this virus the best you can and trust the Lord in faith that he will he will not only deliver you from the virus but he will heal all those who are sick and we we have an increasing number of friends and family who have been affected by COVID-19 so we should take it seriously keep praying and believing that God would fully restore their health and protect those of us who have not been hit by this plague. God bless and keep you. Please share these videos when you see them on Facebook. We'll see you tomorrow.